From the outside looking in, Brooklyn does not seem to be too sustainable. Box buildings, mundane streets, garbage everywhere, Brooklyn is everyone's idea of a ghetto, especially Brownsville. But on further investigation, Brooklyn has a thriving sustainable infrastructure. From recycling scrap yards, to cutting edge wastewater plants, to power steam plants, Brooklyn is sustainable. Take Gershaw Scrap Metal in the East New York Industrial Park, a family owned business that employs 17 full time workers. It is sustainable and profitable. From junk cars to aluminum cans to old wires plus construction materials. It is separated by tight weights and either shipped to China or recycled or melted down. We interviewed Scott, the manager, for more insights into the industry. To someone who doesn't know about this place, um, what happens in the scrap metal facility? It's a scrap metal processing facility. Mm. It gets scrap metal prepared and processed in order to be sold to secondary melters, smelters, foundries, um, manufacturers, or it goes to our headquarter yard where it's processed even further. We're a satellite yard of a main yard out of Medford, mm. Long Island. Mm. And how big is this operation? Like how many? Like, I think there's like in this operation in Brooklyn yeah. is like what 17 people, maybe 16, 17 altogether. Okay. Um, what kind of people buy this stuff? Um, hmm? What kind of buyers do you have here? Like, like what are your clients? Uh, like, the buyers, the, the buyers are all taken care of through Medford. Okay. We're told to load the railroad cars, send the trucks to wherever mm -hmm. they're supposed to go, and they they take care of who they're exactly selling it to and where exactly it's going to go. I guess the question is who brings, like what kind of people bring the scrap metal here? Anybody. Anybody at all. Anybody that has scrap metal. Okay. So it's open. It's anybody. It's people that do this for a living and pick up junk places and bring it in every day. Somebody that's changing all the appliances in their kitchen and they're getting rid of the old ones. Somebody has a, a scrap vehicle and they're buying a new one or whatever. Hmm. As long as they have the proof of ownership and stuff. Yeah, they... Though it's it's basically open to the uh, public, no, no matter who you are, Co companies, commercial, people. Um, is this place profitable? Like, do you make a good amount of money here? Well, I don't see the books, but I would guess so because we yeah. still have a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, can you... like I said, we're satellite yards, so they don't they don't send us a copy of the books every month. Okay. I have I haven't heard them complain too much though, but okay, okay. Um, so, how sustainable? Is your recycling business like? Is this sustainable? Like, like is what do you mean by sustainable? Uh, it's healthy for the environment. You know, like well, it keeps all the junk and garbage mm. out of our competitors' yards mm. and off the streets. Um, is there anything that you don't recycle around here? Yeah, we don't take this yard particularly. We don't recycle plastic. Okay. We don't recycle cardboard or newspaper. Mm. So this acts as a way of taking a lot of scrap metal out of the landfills. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, and it's profitable for the people that bring it in as well. I mean, it's the ones that do it all the time, or even it, it's it's made worth a while of the people that bring it off. So it's not just like a you know green thing that they're doing for the sake of doing it. It's they're getting paid. So it, you can, there's an you economic can be, value. You can be a sustainable company and be profitable. Okay. Um, so yeah, is that what you're saying? It, it, I said you mean by sustainable. Yeah, sustainable means like you're bringing, you're making the the environment less caustic uh you're thinking about the earth and recycling is part and that of that and yes it is, it is a, it's a profitable business that yes is sustainable all right um so what factors influence the price of scrap metals around like do you know supply the, and demand uh, supply and demand, supply right. and demand right. e either overseas or or domestic okay. depending you know it's okay. depending on how much is sold and how much is needed um do you know like how many how, the amount of pounds it needs to make an affordable profit or anything like that can you give us an idea of the prices, like, yeah, like you know, how much, how many pounds you need to get, how much for this kind of metal? If you're bringing in scrap, if you're bringing in, say, if you're bringing in a scrap car, mm. you get if it's a complete vehicle, it's worth ten cents a pound to the person. Okay, ten cents. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, do you recycle any aluminum cans? Here, yeah, we recycle them, just not not too often, but not too often? Okay. it's not it's not an item that we're looking for. So what are the metals that are, like, undergoing a price increase or are, like, in demand? It, it, I, I can't state that. It, it fluctuates every it, it fluctuates. Prices for steel and iron vary month to month. So it, like it, it all depends. It's, it, it's how the economy is going. If they're not making any cars, they're not I selling see. any cars. I they see. don't need nearly as much material to, to melt. And if they don't have as many sales for the following month as far as steel goes, 
they don't if China's economy's in the tank or it's booming, one or the other, that's uh it depends it's completely supply and demand. So, but most of it is dependent on the construction industry, would it not? No. Or it could be it could be manufacturing. Manufacturing in general. It's a, it's a big it's a big it's, it's many variables. Supply and demand throughout the manufacturing industry, yeah, that's a that's a huge factor involved in and like I said, if the economy is very, very, very slow, then they're not uh how would you say it's 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 now? Is it okay? Is it decent? It's decent. It's okay. Right. But it, it, when they get enough material, whatever, they can drop the price to whatever they want to, the mills and say, whatever they need is what they're gonna pay. I see. Okay. Right. And they're not going to pay. They're not going to pay any more than than what they need I or remember, what they have sold. I remember what. Uh, I don't know how far back, but copper was like in high demand, and that was. Well, selling it, it, they're all at decent numbers right now. It's it's like I said, it's decent. It, it's not. I mean, I wouldn't kick my socks off with it. It's not the best in the world, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's decent. Okay, okay so how do you? It's been better. Okay. It's also been way way worse. Okay. Uh, so, how do you make the process here more efficient? Like, do you have any, like, how do you... Process yeah. the metals. Yeah. And... We try to handle it as little as possible. Okay. We try to do what we need to do with it, get it on a sustainable vehicle to get it to where it's going to be You mentioned purchased. that you put you put it on in the railroad carts? Correct. Like, so, it gets shipped by railroad? Right. Freighter? By truck, by railroad, by uh, overseas. Oh, really? Right. I didn't know that, right, so. that you can send, you send scrap overseas to whatever, like, Yeah, China buys a lot of steel. Export is a big market. Yeah, okay. That's why I say it, a lot of it is based on their economies as well. Interesting. Okay. Right, okay. So, what are the risks of working here? Like, um, like, what kind of, like, dangers are there, like, to handle Well, you see, we're just, we're, we wear hard hats, we wear safety yeah. equipment, because yeah. things can fall, things, uh, there's too many numerous things to mention that yeah. would be possibly dangerous. Brooklyn is also home to Newton Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, located in Greenpoint. It is the largest of New York City's 14 wastewater treatment facilities. It is situated on 53 acres, plus serves more than 1 million people in parts of Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan. On average, the facility treats about 18% of New York's wastewater. That means 310 million gallons each day. When it rains, that number doubles to 700 million gallons. In total, NYC's wastewater treatment plant system processes 1.3 billion gallons of wastewater daily. Finally, we toured the steam plant on Shank and Stanley Avenue, serving 37 NYCHA buildings. NYCHA properties are heated through their own steam plant systems. There are steam plants all across five boroughs providing heat for housing apartments. Each plant heats water in several megatank boilers that push it through a central pipe, converting it into steam that is then pushed through a complex network of pipes that distribute heating to the NYCHA's apartment buildings. Each boiler can hold roughly 250,000 gallons of water for each tank. The entire system is coordinated via a 24-7 mainframe dedicated computer. This computer, like a brain, monitors the valves, the boilers, measures the pressure of the water, regulates temperature, and alerts to any possible malfunctions. The plant requires engineers to keep wash 24-7. We talked to the foreman who admitted that the plant could be more efficient if the pipes were properly maintained, something that the city could not do. This led to the national grid taking over. In some boilers, they use oil instead of gas, which often leads to sludge. What is that? the boiler, you would see something in there. It's called scales. So we use that to wash it out. I see. So it's like the residue of the boiling process. You see that big lump in the back there? Yeah. That's okay.
easy way to make it more sustainable would be to lower the PSI, the pressure, by 10% than they are currently using. So while on the surface it might seem that Brooklyn is full of trash, does not recycle, and does not care about the environment, on a deeper level it has people and operations willing to make it sustainable.